For centuries, horses have long been described as a symbol of power, beauty, and strength. Whether it's watching a racehorse run or an old stallion grazing in a pasture, they exude elegance and capture our admiration. While the attention of horse racing fans and the media is focused almost exclusively on the horse's performance, many breeders are working hard to preserve the integrity of all horse breeds. Owners highly value the ancestry records to provide information about their horses' expected potential as performance animals and as breeding stock. The genetic heritage of a registered horse is described by its pedigree. When you go to sell a horse, you want to be able to feel that the buyer is comfortable and you want to know yourself that you're breeding to the stallion who is the stallion. You want that bloodline. I mean, people spend a lot of money in a stud fee. You want to make sure you're breeding the right stallion and you're buying the right mare. Historically, pedigree records were based on available breeding records. Several decades ago, breed registries were quick to recognize the importance of blood typing tests as an objective, scientific means to verify the accuracy of pedigrees. In the mid-1990s, a new technology allowed scientists at the University of California Davis Veterinary Genetics Laboratory to perfect the application of DNA testing. It begins by collecting a horse's DNA from its hair follicles. DNA is used to verify a horse's pedigree. I usually start out by pulling about 10 hairs at a time. And you just grab, you want to grab at the base, wrap it around your finger and give a quick pull and you see that you have very nice root follicles. And we're asking for 30 to 50, so I do this a few times. You can choose different places on the mane. But another option, if you don't want to pull from the mane, is to pull from the tail. And all you need to do is grasp a small amount at the base of the tail and pull, and you get a nice root sample. In foals, this is the preferred method because the main hair is usually too light and it doesn't yield a very good root follicle and the root follicle is the most important part of the sample because that's where the DNA is contained. Breeders place the hair samples in a kit prepared by breed registries or by UC Davis. The follicles are then mailed to the Davis campus for genotyping. DNA has replaced blood testing in recent years because hair is much easier to collect and transport to the lab. On arrival, the hair kit is assigned a case number and then moves swiftly to the lab where a technician separates the root follicles and carefully places them into tubes on a PCR plate, which stands for polymerase chain reaction. PCR allows scientists to take starter bits of DNA and make exact copies. To keep out contamination, the 96 tubes are sealed and sent to another section of the lab where the DNA extraction process occurs. Glenn Burns, who is the chief scientist here, says the overriding principle is to be as careful as you can with each step. Always use good technique. Don't handle things in such a way that you're contaminating the test or allowing contaminants to get into the test. In this section of the lab, a technician takes these hair follicles that were put into the plate and duplicates of the DNA fingerprint will be made. One thing that sets this lab apart from other laboratories is in most laboratories you deal with a few samples, a small set of samples, 12, 100, 200. Here we'll typically do four, five, 600, up to 1,000 samples in one day. And all of our robotics, all of our techniques are aimed at handling a very large numbers of samples very accurately. Cecilia Pinedo is a geneticist who heads the Genomic Research and Development Unit of the Veterinary Genetics Laboratory at UC Davis. She says determining pedigree accuracy is central to their mission. Through the years, we have developed a very stringent uh, process of quality control to maintain the accuracy of our process from the receiving of the sample to the mailing of results to our clients. Each step in the DNA extraction process is critically important. To those individual tubes of hair, we'll add a, a solution that will break open the cells in the root and let out the DNA. It also digests away some of the protein that would otherwise be a problem in the next step. The second step involves the PCR reaction which will make the copies of DNA. He's going to go ahead and put some special 
things onto this plate that will be mixed with the DNA that you saw prepared in the earlier step. Once these things are mixed together and put on a machine that heats and cools them a certain way, it's going to make copies, copies that we'll be able to see when we separate them on our machine. Burns says millions of copies of DNA fragments are needed so that when they pass in front of the laser camera, they will differentiate one animal from another. The third step is placing the PCR plate, which is now full of solution, into a machine, which makes the copies. Once the PCR is completed and we have all the labeled copy, the little bits of DNA we need to separate, we just combine a little bit of each of the plates onto another plate and put it into the machine that actually does the separation. All the work up till now has been creating these tiny fragments of DNA. And this machine is the heart and soul of our lab. What goes on inside the machine is that these little needles are lowered into the sample, the electric current goes on, and the DNA fragments separate themselves out inside these tiny glass tubes full of polymer. And the little ones go through very quickly, the large ones take a longer time. And in the end, they end up going past a camera where a laser lights them up and the light that strikes the DNA makes the picture on the camera so that we know what size each little piece of DNA is as it goes by. The final process is to verify and analyze the DNA profiles for each horse. We have a staff of eight technicians who do this quickly and efficiently. Let me show you an example. Here is the profile of a DNA type for a horse that is very good. This is an example of one that is not very good and would have to be retested by our sample preparation group. Once a DNA profile is obtained, the process of parentage analysis begins. Our parentage analysis software brings up the DNA markers for the offspring and the parents for the parentage analyst to review. Here are Mary Williams, one of our horse parentage analysts, is looking at a case where the dam and sire qualify. That confirms the accuracy of the pedigree record. In this next case, the pink blocks show a parentage exclusion, which means the stallion of record cannot be the sire of this foal. It is now up to the registry or breeder to identify other possible stallions to compare. Meticulous in their work, the staff understands the importance of what they do for breeders and owners. Our parentage analysts are highly qualified for several reasons. For one, they have worked in many different departments within our laboratory, so they have experience with the process and understand how the process works. Um, they are also trained with our um, in-house software, which helps them to quickly process um, our parentage information. And our second pass analysts, those who handle exclusion cases and other difficult cases, have over 20 years experience in the laboratory. Cecilia Panetto thinks UC Davis has the best veterinary genetics laboratory in the world. We are the best because we have highly trained staff, we have the best equipment, we have excellent uh, quality control of the whole process of testing. This UC Davis lab has been doing genotyping longer than anyone else. Currently, they serve more than 100 breed registries and they represent organizations from around the world. As a nonprofit lab associated with the university, the income from our genotyping service goes back to the laboratory and the university to support research programs, to support additional developments that will improve our service. According to Panetto, it takes about five days to receive the sample and send results to clients. In addition to the genotyping service for animal identification and parentage testing, they do diagnostic tests for genetic diseases and coat colored traits. Genetic diseases may cause a loss of uh, breedings uh, if one produces an affected foal and therefore it is important in many cases to screen the breeding stock before breeding decisions are made. The UC Davis Veterinary Genetics Laboratory offers the most diverse palette of genetic testing in the animal breeding industry. Panetto says behind every lab technician is a geneticist, a molecular biologist, a chemist, as well as hundreds of other scientists. And that's because an entire university supports the services provided by the Veterinary Genetics Laboratory.